Hi, everyone. Cheryl Cran. Welcome to our next episode of the Next Now podcast. My previous episode was about the quiet quitting phenomenon where uh, people were focusing more on boundaries and not, you know, trying to have that life work balance between the blurred lines that have been created by the hybrid workplace or by remote work. And this week, what I want to talk about is some of the sort of challenges that are continuing to arise as a result of the hybrid workplace and and what we can do about it. Now, I have had previous episodes where I've talked about biases, you know, where we have biases that, you know, working in office is superior to working remotely, or we could have a bias that working virtual is superior to working in office. And really where we are now is we're, we're all navigating sort of that trying to find that sweet spot of productivity, trying to find ways to measure success in both volume and quality, trying to find ways to know whether people are actually delivering on their performance without being able to see them in the office. And these are some common things and themes that I'm hearing from leaders and organizations that I'm that I'm working with. I had a call a couple of weeks ago with a potential client where they were in the manufacturing industry and really struggling with uh, the hybrid as it meant to them because a lot of their jobs in the manufacturing cannot be remote as of yet. We don't yet have the technology for uh, managing robots in a manufacturing environment, although we're heading there. Uh, but right now they need people to show up in the workplace to, to be their hands-on. Um, and other industries like the utilities industries or any service industry where it requires person-to-person -person interaction are really struggling with hybrid because there's the whole thing about equity and, and fair play. So if somebody gets to work virtually and they get the benefits of paying no gas because of commuting or less gas because they're not commuting or um, you know having more time for family, somebody who's having to travel into work is looking for fair play. They're going, okay, so wait a second, I'm you know my job requires me to be in person. What is the organization doing to factor that in to my worker happiness as that person? And so some organizations are looking at, you know, allowing people that are coming in for in-person manufacturing roles, utilities roles to do things like three days on, you know, three days off, the four day work week, extended adding to holiday benefits. Um, giving time off, uh, you know, for, for personal reasons, like half a day, uh, reducing hours for same salary. I know these are all provocative ideas. And a lot of times when people hear them, they're like, ah, all the, all the money implications of those ideas. And remember, we are in a workers market and workers hold the cards. Just today, I had a coach conversation with a leader where they're hiring a new position. And um, they were. she was saying, you know, people used to be like, they used to like apply for the job and then you'd interview them and you'd, you'd feel almost like you had the upper hand as the employer. And she said, dare I say that it used to be that you should be grateful that you're even getting a job interview with this company. And then she said, but now recently in the last two people that she had uh, received resumes from, even before the interview stage, these people were emailing going, what's the pay? What's the, the ra range of salary? Um, is it hybrid? What does hybrid mean to you and your organization? Um, and this person, one person was bold enough to say, look, um, I have to factor in gas, time, family, commuting time in anything that I choose to do. Now, you know, from, from her perspective, she's like, oh my gosh. And I said, well, in many ways, if you were to flip your perspective on that, you could look at that as this person's doing you a favor because they're being totally upfront about what's important to them. Now, in this particular case, the salary did fall within the range, which was you know very helpful for the person hiring. The other questions, it forced her to have to look at, well, yes, we do do hybrid. Here's how we do it. Uh, this person was also working less hours, so they wanted less hours for their salary. And again, she had to be flexible and go, could we do that? So that was an example of organizations having to adapt to uh, the workers market reality, which is more workers are, they're not just applying for a job anymore. They're asking themselves, what's in it for me? Yes, I want to add value to the organization and, and it's a win-win and it's a two-way street. 
well, what's in it for me? What's the impact on my well-being if I'm commuting an hour each way every day? What's in it for me if I don't have any hybrid time? How am I able to balance some of the, the perks of being hybrid or remote where I can have a little bit of that extra time for exercise or you know not commuting? And so um, I, I've spoken about this in many previous episodes around what the post-pandemic reality has created is workers asking themselves, why am I working? How much money is enough money? What work lights me up? What is the company willing to do for me? And, and what does the company expect from me in return? So really, the hybrid pitfalls that we're all finding right now are the challenges, I believe, are solved by being really open and flexible especially if it's somebody you want to hire. Now, this same leader said to me, you know, I'm struggling with this a little bit because my existing team members aren't quite making what this person's asking for just to be hired. And my comment to, to that was, yes. And in this particular organization, they were relooking at everything, all their structures. So it meant that eventually, and in short term, um, it would all equalize. It would all be something that the existing employees would benefit from as well. But it is a valid challenge for leaders right now to go, okay, I need to hire and hire people that are applying for jobs are being more demanding, are asking more questions, have higher expectations. How do I rationalize that with my existing team? Now, if you've got a hybrid workplace policy, which at this stage, I believe every organization needs to have that. You need to have, and, and whether you're a small organization without an HR department or you're a multinational organization with a massive HR department, there needs to be a very clear hybrid workplace policy, which means what are the expectations? Um, at this time of year, specifically because we are calling it post-pandemic, a lot of organizations are, are wanting everybody back in the office, but that's backfiring. Because as I've said on previous podcasts, hybrid is here to stay. It's not going away. So what we want to do is create a hybrid environment that meets the needs of the organization, as well as meeting the needs of customizing as best as we can to our employees so that there's a win-win. So what I'm seeing a lot of organizations, they're tending to have sort of a two to three day in the office requirement or request, and then and then having also the two day a week uh, being able to work virtually or remote. What we're seeing as a pattern is the traditional in-office days tend to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and a lot of people are choosing their virtual days to be Mondays and Fridays, which makes sense from a personal life management standpoint, because then you're extending your weekends and you're building in this you know, extended time for family and errands and all those things. But it has to work for the organization. It has to, you know, translate into productivity and such. I saw an interesting cartoon in New York Magazine where it was two people going into the office on a Friday and the caption was, it's really nice to come into the office when nobody is here. <laughs> and I think that encapsulates the hybrid reality. And I do know that there are many leaders who are struggling with the the, the belief that people aren't as effective if they're left to their own devices. And I would say we're still in that transition zone of finding that perfect sort of, I don't know, there, I don't think there ever is perfect, but sort of that, that place in hybrid where we are measuring results. We have ways to measure volume and quality. We have ways to measure performance that is not subjective, but is based on data and you know customer metrics, peer metrics, all of those things. But I think it's also really important to recognize, you know, these companies that are saying everybody has to come back, that it, there is a there is a risk to that in that people are looking for those hybrid options. And I can tell you anecdotally, but also with survey results that workers are saying if companies are not offering hybrid today, probably not going to consider it. So something to think about. The challenges are partly in mindset, you know, the biases. Am I, am I biased to having people in office because that's the way I feel more in control as a leader? Am I biased to virtual because I personally like the freedom? Like these are the things and the opportunities for dialogue that we need to have within the organization. So I think, you know, for this week, it's really thinking about, you know, what is your workplace hybrid strategy or, or policy? If you don't have one, 
Who could you talk to? Who could be charged with creating that so that everyone's on the same page and that we have expectations? And what's our definition of success of the hybrid workplace working? So for example, one of my clients, they have a hybrid workplace policy, and yet some departments, the preference is for the most of them to come in and work together. Other departments, the preference is they're all virtual. So even within an organization, there can be varying degrees of application of that hybrid workplace policy. So again, something to think about, whether you're a leader or you're a worker, if you're a worker, be cognizant of the fact that companies are still trying to figure out the best way to do hybrid. So when you're making your assessment of who you want to work for, when they say things like, we're working on this, or we have an eye on this, pay attention to that, because that means that it might not be perfect right now, but it's something that is going to be coming down the pipeline and it might be worth your while to, to leap into that job knowing that the company is focused on it. So I'll end this particular podcast there. If, uh, As always, if you have any questions, email me, Cheryl at nextmapping.com. Go to my LinkedIn, follow me there, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. I look forward to engaging with you. All the best with hybrid workplace this fall. Take care. Take care.